In the last video, I showed the behavior of Ethernet on a local area network where we have a shared medium. And that was created because I had a hub in the center. And so with the hub in the center, basically the behavior of the hub was any frame that hits the hub gets regenerated and sent out of all ports except the one that it came in on. And it showed that when we tried to communicate from PCA to PCE, the frame went everywhere. It went to all of these other PCs, except these PCs, since their MAC address was not the MAC address in the destination address field, they dropped the frame and only PCE accepted the frame because the destination MAC address matched its MAC address. And so that was how basically on a shared medium ethernet functions. The frames go everywhere in the network, but only the device that has the MAC address receives it or accepts it. And that's because ethernet is, was designed as a shared network, a shared medium. So now we've replaced the hub though with a switch and the switch is gonna give us additional benefits. One, with the hub, two devices could not send and receive at the same time. When PCA tried to send to PCE and PCC tried to send to PCB at the same time, it caused a collision and the frames basically were collided and the communication failed because the, the voltage on the wire collided one frame with the other and basically you had a corruption of the frames. So then Ethernet knows how to deal with that by backing off and waiting and jamming the signal and then resending. However, basically switches improved the efficiency of ethernet networks drastically. Why? Because on a, a switch can send and receive at the same time, it's full duplex, which means it can send and receive at the same time, but also the switch has something called a MAC address table. So MAC address table. And what the MAC address table does is it matches MAC addresses with switch ports when it learns about devices connected to its switch ports. So when PCA sends to PCE, the switch will learn the MAC address and say, hey, this MAC address is on switch port one. And now if someone tries to send a frame to PCA, the switch, instead of flooding it out of all ports, it will just forward it out of the port where it knows the MAC address. If it knows that PCA's MAC address is on switch port one, then it will just forward that frame out of that port. And we can see that here. So first of all, I'm gonna check to see PCA here. And you can see I've already been playing with this, but I'm gonna do an, uh, I'm gonna do an ARP-A, and we see that PCA knows that 14 and knows its MAC address. So it knows 192.168.0.14 IP address has this MAC address. So it knows it. So PCA knows the MAC address of this device. So when I send a ping, the destination MAC address will be PCE's. So the switch, if the switch knows the MAC address, will forward it just out of this port. However, if we look at the switch here, and we say enable and show MAC address dash table, you can see that currently the switch does not know any MAC addresses and has not mapped any MAC addresses to any switch ports. You can see no MAC addresses here, no switch ports. So since the switch doesn't know anything, it doesn't know about any MAC addresses uh, mapped to any of its switch ports, it will behave like a hub and it will send that frame not just to PCE, but also it'll send it this way and this way and this way. It'll forward it or flood it out of all ports except the one that it came in on. Now let's test this out, okay? Now, we're going to go to simulation mode here. I've already set up the filters to filter just for ICMP here. And then we're going to create a simple ping from, uh, from PCA to PCE. And then we're gonna observe the behavior. So here goes the frame. The frame hits the switch. And then the switch sends it out of all ports except the one that it came in on. Why? Because the switch did not know where PCE's MAC address was. It didn't know the MAC address, so it behaved like a hub and it just flooded it. Now let's look at the switch's MAC address table. Now look what happened. The switch learned about PCA. So it learned the MAC address associated with switch port one which is PCA, it learned about the MAC address. Why? 
because the switch builds its MAC address table from the source MAC address in the frame. So when that frame came into the switch, the switch saw the source MAC address as PCAs and said, okay, you're on port one, and it put it in its MAC address table. And we can look at the incoming frames here, inbound PDU, and you can see that the source MAC address BA81, BA81 is the one that it put into, right? That's PCA source MAC address, and it said that's on port one. Okay, so now when PCE replies in the ping, it replies with the echo reply, the reply will hit the switch. The switch won't flood it out of every port that it, uh, every port except the one it came in on because the switch knows where PCA's MAC address is. It knows that it's associated with port one. So watch what happens when I hit go. So we hit go and here comes the ping reply. Here comes the reply. The reply hits the switch. The switch looks in the packet, right? In the packet, the destination MAC address is BA81. There's the destination MAC address. Why? Because now this frame is going from here to here. So this device's MAC address is the destination MAC address. The switch knows the MAC address BA81, knows it's associated with switch port one. And so what will it do? It just forwards it to the right device. So when a switch knows the MAC address, it acts accordingly and just forwards it to the correct port. Well, that, it, that saves a lot of efficiency, or that creates a, a huge efficiency in the network when the switch can learn about everybody's MAC address and is not having to flood the frames out of all ports. It's, and, and it's behaving like a switch and not like a hub. Now, similarly, if I delete this activity here, and let's this time try to do a dual. So we'll say we're gonna um, go from here to here. And at the same time, we're gonna go from here to here. All right, so we're gonna to try to do two pings simultaneously at the same time. Now this wouldn't work on a hub, but we'll see if it works on the switch. So we'll click go. And well, it only shows one, but both are going. And there it goes, it gets to the destination. Okay, now here it comes back. Okay, and so it shows one of them successful. And it's showing that the other one is successful. Now, it didn't show them simultaneously, but they're taking place simultaneously. I think you're supposed to. But as you can see, both were successful. Now, both pings happen simultaneously, but with a switch, you know, devices can send and receive at the same time. They can send and receive at the same time. The switch is able to handle it. It's full duplex. And so you don't have collisions. So in a situation like this, we don't have collisions. Both devices can send at the same time. And not only that, the switch knows where to send the frames if it learns the MAC addresses. And as you can see now, now the switch knows four MAC addresses because it made a mapping in the MAC address table from the source MAC addresses in each frame. It registered them to certain switch ports. And so now it knows, okay, this MAC address is on this port. And this MAC address, I've seen it on this port. And I've seen this MAC address on this port. And so it's able to efficiently forward and you can send and receive at the same time. So switch was a huge upgrade to ethernet networks.